Okay, so we've been talking about uh, modeling different kinds of systems. Uh, and last time we talked specifically about looking at this proportional relationship between flow and effort variables and how that relates to transfer functions. But um, all of this is only relevant if you're talking about a particular kind of systems. And they, we call them LTI systems for short or linear time invariant systems. Um, what that means is if a system is linear time invariant, and we will talk about specifically what that means, um, there is a general approach to describing it. And, and it involves this equation that you can see in front of you here. Um, now, before you freak out, I know that looks completely hideous, but all it is is it's essentially saying a linear time invariant system, um, we can write a general form that relates the uh, input, which is RT here, um, to the output CT um, by using all of all of these uh, all of these additional factors and terms here. Um, essentially, what they are, what you can hopefully see, is that each one of these terms is a derivative and then some form of coefficient. And so another way of thinking about this is this is a general approach to finding the transfer function for linear time invariant systems. We actually did this in the previous video. We uh, assumed that there weren't any time order effects. We assumed that the relationship was only proportional. So we only had these terms here. Uh, and what we had was essentially a zero C T equals uh, B zero uh, R T that's the general form but what we said for our previous example where we had f equals kx which is Hooke's law is essentially we said that um, the output was uh, the output was f so that became f uh, we said the input was x which is the extension on the string so that one there and then instead of having two separate terms for coefficients which we can we combine them into one. So I could rewrite this if I get rid of that term there. I can rewrite this as B0 over A0. And now that term there is just K. Now, this works for Hooke's law because that is a simple system. But it's essentially saying any system, if we add additional terms containing derivatives, which explain the time response of the system, we can do the same thing to calculate the um, calculate the time response and the transfer function of our systems. Now they, this is where they all come together. So this is a general nth order equation and whenever we use it we can decide how many terms we want to use or need to use for the accuracy of our system. Many times just using these simple terms down here for proportional systems will be good enough. Um, sometimes we will require more terms. Now I don't want you to memorize that equation that is not the point of engineering 110. But I want to try and generalize here and say that what we're doing uh, is trying to find a general approach for dis mathematically describing systems that we, we don't know the innards of. And this equation is really at the, at the core of it. So what is a linear time invariant equation? It must be time invariant, it must be linear, and it must be composed of ordinary differential equations. So time invariance is very, very simple. We assume that constants are constant. And that, that sounds like a tautology, it sounds kind of ridiculous, but think of it like this. Uh, let's say you're driving your car around. Over the course of an hour, you would not expect the suspension in your car, the springiness of the suspension, to change, right? Not over an hour, unless you happen to have an accident during that hour, but on normal operation, you'd not expect that to change. Contrast that with what happens if you're driving your car around for two and a half thousand years. Then yeah, you probably would expect the springiness of the springs in your um, in your shock absorbers to change over that time because they probably rust or you know um, melt in nu nuclear hellfire or something. So all of this time invariance essentially says we're only going to model time scales with this approach that um, are such that our constants stay constant, um, and that is a, a simple but very very important assumption. The second thing is linearity, and linearity is very, very simple. Uh, we can state it in English as, can this relationship be approximated as a straight line for small changes? So take a look at that graph on the right-hand side over there. Here's, here's a, a rough example of linearity for you. Look at this, uh, this line in the background that I'm going over in blue. That is clearly not a straight line. It's actually a parabola. But if I zoom right in on it, at any point along that line, I can say I can approximate the slope of that line as a straight line. So here, 
that's an approximate straight line there I've got another approximate straight line there I've got another approximate straight line here I've got another approximate straight line and the key is if I only look at very small changes here in this axis then I can approximate this entire blue line as a series of short straight yellow lines that's what linearity means now not all systems are linear let's take a different example what if I had uh, instead of this nice background curve if I had something that went like this what we would find is that going up the left hand side of that curve this is all linear I can approximate this as a straight line that is a straight line and that is a straight line and coming down this side that is approximately a straight line that is a straight line that is a straight line but what happens up here there is no straight line which is a good approximation of that sharp point at the top because there is actually no defined derivative at that top point so that means this at this point here is a discontinuity this is a non-linear system so I can't assume that it will respond linearly the final thing that we have to talk about are these ordinary differential equations. Now, these are just equations that um, use derivative or integral terms to describe how they respond over time. And almost every relationship can be expressed as a derivative or integral in, in some for, form or another. The key point of all of this is that linear time invariant models, if they exist, we have a general approach to solving them. Why? Because in an LTI model, we assume that each component within it um, can act independently, but we can generate a description of the entire system just by adding the effects of all these individual bits together. And so we're going to take a look at, uh, at some of this in the next video where we go through some different examples. But just to give you some other kind of example relationships that you might see out in the, out in the real world that you wish to model, we've already talked about this proportional relationship, and the proportional relationship is very much the simplest one. Um, but it is not by no means the, the only one. So um, let's say, for example, uh, you have an inversely proportional relationship. So instead of having uh, a nice plot that looks like um, this for our linear relationship, if this is our x and this is our y, for an inverse relationship, if this is my x and this is my y, the larger my x is, the smaller my y is. So it will actually go like that. If we see this kind of relationship we know we are talking about an inversely proportional relationship and another way of describing that would be if I plot it like this instead if I plot y versus 1 over x that would be a straight line um, proportional to the derivative it's it's the same thing I can't give you a general shape like this because this now has an additional factor it depends on time but I can describe it by drawing a plot like this which goes y is proportional to dx over dt and that is a straight line that is one way of describing proportional to the derivative proportional to the time integral it's the same thing again so y is proportional to the integral of x dt like that uh, and proportional to the second derivative you can probably see the pattern here it's just the same thing and then I'd write the second derivative down here so let's just do that to be completely clear So we'll look in the next couple of videos at a few different examples of each of these, but with all of them, we're talking about general relationships here. All we need to do to take them from a general relationship to a specific one is to replace that proportional sign with an equals and add in a constant of proportionality. And if in our um, problem or in our real world scenario, we get given enough information, we can calculate specifically what that constant of proportionality is. And hopefully you can remember that constant of proportionality just comes from those terms and those previous equations that I showed you.